Have you ever known someone with type 1 diabetes? Chances are that you have. Type 1 diabetes affects over 20 million people in the United States. The most common group affected is 16 to 18 percent of Native Americans and Alaskan Natives. Type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed in early childhood. However, adults and teenagers can be diagnosed with it. It is uncommon to perform genetic tests to see if one is at risk with type 1 diabetes, as usually one can infer from family history to determine likelihood. Type 1 diabetes is caused by an autoimmune disorder. An autoimmune disorder means that the body's immune system is no longer recognizing its own body cells. In the case of type 1, the body is no longer recognizing its isolate cells, which are responsible for producing insulin and found in the pancreas. Therefore, the body's immune system starts to make antibodies against its own isolate cells. So the immune system ends up destroying the body's own isolate cell to where the body no can no longer make insulin. Without insulin, the body lacks sufficient energy because insulin is used to break down glucose so it can be used for energy by the body. Now let's get to the complicated stuff, the genetics of type 1. Type 1 diabetes is not a disease in which your likelihood of acquiring it is simply based on recessive and dominant alleles. Instead, for type 1, one's chances of having it are both based in genetics and lifestyle choices. The affected genes change with certain ethnicities. The genes seem to change because of a point mutation caused by free oxygen radicals. Due to the fact that type 1 is more than genetic, you can say that it is and it is not inherited. One can be predisposed to acquiring type 1, however, through healthy lifestyle choices, their chances can be reduced for developing it. One may also be born with the disease fully developed and suffer from that as such. But altogether, the basis for diabetes is genetic and inherited. Con now that we know what causes type 1 diabetes and the genetics, let's look at the symptoms that people with type 1 diabetes have. According to diabetes.org, frequent sy symptoms include frequent urination, excessive thirst, extreme hunger, unusual weight loss, increased fatigue, irritability, and blurred vision. Type 1 diabetes and the symptoms of it usually do not result in fatality. However, complications resulting from poor management of the disease can lead to death. Because patients with type 1 diabetes must take insulin to help digest sugars, if a patient takes too much or too little of their insulin, they can have serious consequences. These can result in hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, and other problems that result from, the, from diabetes, such as obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Additional concerns include skin disorders, poor circulation, blindness, nerve damage in the feet, and a higher likelihood of acquiring gum disease. Now you probably want to know how do we treat type 1 diabetes. First, there are several main forms of treating type 1 diabetes. The most common is for patients to self-administer blood glucose tests and take appropriate steps to either raise or low lower those levels. The man himself, Wilford Brimley, in order to measure blood glucose, one must prick themselves, usually on a finger, and take a drop of blood to place into a meter. A normal reading is between 90 to 180 milligrams per deciliter of glucose, with ideal areas varying based on when the measurement was taken, after or before eating. One may also administer an A1C test, which measures average blood sugar levels over a long-term time frame. This gives a patient an idea of how well he or she is managing symptoms and glucose levels. Certain transplants may also be performed, such as kidney, pancreas, or islet transplants. These are generally reserved for severe cases, and like any other transplant, it takes a long time for a particular organ to be found. A patient with diabetes type 1 may also have an insulin pump installed into their body. This pump can release insulin automatically 24 hours a day to keep glucose levels normal within the body. These treatments are effective when performed correctly. As for future prospects for type 1 diabetes, they are uncertain. Based on the format of the genes causing the disease, one might think it would be, it would be possible to use gene therapy. Experiments have been conducted with beta cells from a healthy pancreas to try and spur production of healthy cells. However, these have been met with mixed success so far and will certainly be the subject for future research and experiments. Last and probably most important of all is the quality of life a person can lead with type 1 diabetes. While their quality of life is not that bad, there are a lot of things in one's life changed by having type 1 diabetes. 
They often must schedule their lives around their insulin injections and structure each meal of the day far in advance. This can be very stressful and time-consuming for diabetes patients. Those with the disease also must use extreme caution when affected by a fever or infectious disease, as the body is working overtime to fight off the illness and must have enough energy to do so. Through good treatment, prevention, and medical testing, diabetes patients can live perfectly normal and healthy lives and look forward to the future with a smile on their face.